What's up gamers, gamies, and gamers? My name is John and welcome to Loop Sub Keep Kimo. The heart of is mysterious. Well, I just got um I got a message from a cool uh team, cool team actually. Cool studio team called the uh, studio studio Encord. They're pretty cool, I like the little logo too with a bird and fox thing. And so I wanted to give it a shot. Well actually I first saw it and it was like pretty interested. I liked the thumbnail of it and the, the story that is actually basically the story tells it is a tell about a young man who finds himself with the help of a mysterious girl who suddenly appeared or more likely uh, like more like fell in his life. Sometimes it's hard to get back up when life gets tough. All you need is a little push. So that's a pretty interesting little uh, story of it. So I just wanted to give it a shot, and the, the studio encore was pretty cool, and, and his team too. So let's get started, shall we? <laughs> uh, start. Oh, I see letters. Prologue, and this was created by Kinetic Visual Novel. All right, what do we got? The tree from the title screen. Once upon a time. There was a bird that lived on top of the really tall tree. The bird was happy to be born in such a beautiful world. As such, the bird wanted to see the world he has to work. One day, I'm gonna soar through the sky. Yeah, if it's baby, most likely you're gonna be thrown out the nest. But first, I have a lot of growing up to do. Oh, there you go. You're gonna not fly. That's either they fly or they don't fly. It depends on it. And it's actually tragic. <laughs> On one uh, fine summer day, the bird was chirping away. The bird accidentally fell off the, its nest. The bird came tumbling down, crashing through the branches and leaves. The bird came. Oh, okay, it's still. Ah. Uh, oh. I like the background music with this. Oh, the bird. Uh, the bird hit the ground with a big thud. <laughs> yeah. Never watched those documents. Ow. Oh. Hmm, interesting. Hey, Bubby. The bird began to cry in pain. The pain hurt so much the bird is it was in panic. Oh, help me, somebody. I think I broke my wing. Hmm. The bird cried and cried, but to his not avail, no one came to the bird's rescue. Am I gonna die? Huddling into a, bird, a ball, the bird accepted its peaceful resting ground. Not before long, the bird heard rustling behind itself. Not knowing the unknown, the unbird embraced what was yet to come. Slowly, a fox appeared before the bird. Oh my god, their logo, for real. Slowly, a fox appeared before it. The bird yelled with dismay and became frightened. The gaze and fox appro uh, approached the box. Ah, bed, eh, bird. Bird knew, ah, uh, watch it. Alright, are you gonna eat me, Mr. Fox? The fox slowly picked up the bird and began walking to its den. Inside the den, he gently placed the bird down and began fixing the bird's wing. No, I am not gonna eat you, bird. Blah. The bird is on, yet confused, answered. But, but you're a fox, a predator. Why would you help me, a bird, and the prey? The fox stopped a second and really think about the question before giving an answer. Say so shit, I'm not that bad, bitch. Like for real, like looking at the ceiling of his den. He replied, "Hmm, I don't know. I just thought you needed help, so I came to your rescue. That's it. Hmm." That's it. The bird leaped and hugged the fox. Hmm. Oh, this is a nice little bit. I, I don't get how it's still gonna get to do. Alright, thank you, Mr. Fox. Hmm. Maybe this has tied in with the story. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No need to be so formal. Just call me Fox. Alright. <laughs> 
Soon after, the bird and the fox became really good friends, and they spent their days enjoying the rest of the summer. As the days were getting cooler, the bird sat on the fox stand and looked at the sky. <laughs> What's wrong, bird? Hmm. The bird sighed in despair. What shit? It's nothing. Hmm. The fox saw sadness in the bird's eyes and knew that the bird wasn't happy. Then the fox, uh, the fox looked towards the sky when it was uh, its companion. Oh, I couldn't see that for a second. The sky looks very so vast and open. It seems like you have a lot of exploring to do. Oh, what? <laughs> Before the bird uh, could question that statement, the fox began again. I'll be fine. Oh. Go, go, my friend. I want you to be happy. Ignore the background if you hear it. I'm just saying. The bird's eyes sparkled with hope, glimmering with the passion. The bird hugged the fox and leaped into there. You can do it, my friend. Oh, that's such a good. <laughs> that's a good big picture. The bird's wings stretched as far as it could reach, and with a swing, uh, I flew off. I'm flying. I'm actually flying. Mm -mm. The bird laughed as the, uh, as the fox did, the two waved each other farewell. When I'm done, I'll come back again, friend. With one big whoosh, the, butch, and the bird took off into the sunlight sky. Sunlight sky, my bad. The fox waved his final farewell. Aww. Hmm. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Go, my friend. I want you to be happy. You can do it. Oh, I like the little message it sent. It. I I like that. I really, um, it makes me want to tear a little bit, man. <laughs> my friend, be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Damn. <gasps> Act one. Well, shit. Oh, that was uh, that was something. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> there's like a, I don't know what that is—a village or something or a jungle house. I don't know why. I had a dream. That dream again. It was the fairy tale my ma mother told me when I was younger, but it still confused me to this day. Once in a while, I will dream about that bird and the fox. Maybe it was so I can remember her. My mother passed away due to the illness when I was ten. She used to tell me folk tales and fairy tales of tiger ghouls, river dragons, beautiful enchantments, and more. That could that include the bird and the fox story. Only, I never liked that that ending. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the ending was sad. Fox was left al all alone after helping the bird. I felt sympathy for the fox. Maybe I'm just like the fox, left alone in this world. Dots. Despite that, things happen in life. Dwelling about the past won't do me no good. I'm pretty sure mom wouldn't want that. <sighs> oh shit. Just another day. I get a feeling neutral as I did my daily routine for in the morning. Get up, fix bed, groom myself, eat a bit, eat for a bit, and out to the field. Hmm. After putting out my uh, black shirt and pants, I notice a small gap near the armpit of my the shirt. Jeez, I must have uh, have torn against the branches when I walked home in the dark yesterday. That could be why I didn't notice it. Rumbling aside, I grab my red silk bag. Uh, and wrapped around it in my waist three times. After the third wrap, I tied the belt and into a knot to secure my pants from dropping. <sighs> I was about to prepare breakfast only to find out that I ran out of rice. Oh jeez, I ran out of rice too. 
I guess I'll have to uh, farm again. I prepared uh, the farming tools on my straw carrier and made sure I got everything. Hose, check. Sickle, check. Straw carrier, check. Lunch? Scurrying back to the kitchen, I grab a handful of rice and two drumsticks from leftovers and wrap them. Wrap the leaf around the food to form a sack. Placing them into a carrier, I cross lunch on my, uh, my metal uh, mental list. Blah. Check. Transition. I'm uh, getting like a hill or something. Walking out to the home, I take a brief breath of a chilly breeze and breath of a chilly windy. My bad. The cool breeze uh, nipped my nose as I wrinkled it to against it. A call could be heard from the distance. It was an indication of a rising morning. Of a rising morning. Looking up at the sky, it is a black canvas with only the ray of light being hinted at the bottom. Trees lean one to another as though they are yet awoken. Some restless, restless than others. The grass tickles my feet as it waves to with the end, with the wind. The sword runs as smooth frost in between. Locking the door behind me, I walked the lonely path towards the village. Although the path is out of sight, it is out of my mind. I've been walking on the roads for so, so long that I could... Oh, excuse me. Could do it uh, with my eyes closed. As of for now, it is too quick, too early to see the morning deep. I can feel the, uh, each droplet as soft as they splashed a wet wipe against my sides. Nothing is hit. Heard, except my rustling with the grass as I tap trend the road and as I come in the the wind. Transition. The village. Oh, after walking about a mile or so path, I finally reached the village. As I approached the first house, I noticed the farther existing is straw establishment. So many pieces of this. Alright, this is something else. As the eye, as our eyes contacted, his head gave me a small nod, and I tipped back to uh, the jester. He turned to and marched the opposite direction from me, with his straw carrier uh, mm, on his back and his hose leaning uh, mm, on his right shoulder. Following him is, was his wife uh, locking the door with two small children. Both of them, uh, the children had shirts and even shoes, but uh, were pantsless. I quietly laughed in my mind, and as a reminder, of, uh, as this reminded me as myself, of myself when I was younger, I felt a bit embarrassed of myself. As I kept walking, I noticed more and more villagers exiting their homes and walking the opposite direction from me. I guess it's work time. As I reached the rim of the village, I depart departed from the path and stepped into the thicker. I began walking far past the village to the other side of the mountain towards the field normally cultivated from. Everyone from the nearby village seemed to gather and form ah far, not bad, my bad, form their rice in the opposite direction. I'll never know why, but at least I get a huge land to farm to hold to myself. Well that's good actually, that really is. As soon as I arrived at my destination, I took no time to hesitate and began working while the sun was still awakened. With two hands lightly gripping with the holes, I nimbly stepped the earth as I plowed the dirt around uh, <clears throat> until the moist so soil was above. One, two, one, two. Swiftly moving from left and right, left to right, the field, I quickly jabbed the ground to create rows. Uh, conserving my strength, I exerted. A small, a slow breathe with each swing. I would wipe the droplets from my brow a few times. I had to be careful not to get salty dro uh, drops on my vision. The, bur uh, the burn from the sweat in my eye would cause me to stop for a time. Along the way, the sweat gland from my palms left a wet surface from the back breaking work. After so long, these hands have been Nothing. And it's daytime. Nice. It seemed like only 
second, plus six hours has already passed. The sun had finally looked down upon me. I guess the talk and time flies when you're walking, working really hard. That is true, yeah. Or maybe people just don't pay attention to time when they're busy. That is true, too. Yeah, I'm trained. Walking off the field, I stretched out my limbs. It was time for a break. Hmm, alright. As I was stretching, I noticed a tall tree that provided plenty of shade from the sun. Oh, is this tree right here? Alright. The luminosity of the sun could not falter the blades of the leaves as it sheltered the ground beneath it. It was a perfect resting spot. I walked over to the tree and sat down to rest. Opening a leaf sack, I pulled out the leftover drumstick and began chowing my chowing, chewing the lunch. Blah, blah, blah. This tree is perfect! I wonder why I never noticed uh, all, all these years of farming. Hmm. After I finished my lunch, I placed the leaf, the leaf sack back to the, in the corner. I sat there silently listening to the violins of the winds, harmonizing with the birds, cheerfully lullabies. This is, I'm not gonna lie, they these these guys know how to work their their vocabulary in this. They they really do in the sentences, like the way they're describing, like the environment. Uh, that's this is pretty good. I'm not lying, dude. Pretty good, actually. Especially at the beginning, it, it got me teary a little. And the leaves uh, vibrate dr and drumming throughout the atmospheres, and their distant cries from the forest. I closed my eyes to listen, I listened, and I listened, and I listened, and... Z, 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 Jenko, so that's his name. Snore. Thump. Ow! An instant jolt shocked me from my sleep slumber, and I panicked eh, to my awakening. It felt like if someone threw a sack of rice at me. Anger with my bloodshot eyes, uh, I looked beyond the horizon to see who would uh, wake the beast from his sleep. Only the glimpse at the corner of my eyes and marvelous wonder bestowed upon my lap. Who the? Are you puckering up to him already? You're the, like. As I looked down, I saw a radiant girl. The radiant girl. Uh, you know what? I think we're gonna find out about this girl a little bit later on, but. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna leave it off for right here for right now guys cuz so without further ado guys I hope you guys have a Good night a good evening and good morning from where we're from. So peace out and sayonara guys Bye-bye